than three is the number to call. First up, though, let's talk to our two guests. First is uh, Alp Mehmet, who's the vice chair of Migration Watch, uh, and also then David Hansen, who's shadow immigration minister and Labour MP for Dedan. Very much appreciate you joining us, gentlemen. If I could start with you, Alp, um, uh, this is interesting that this has overtaken the economy as the chief concern of British voters. Why do you think that is? <laughs> no, no surprise to us. As you know, we, we repeatedly have been saying that this is of great concern to the people and it behoves the politicians to take note. Uh, you, you, you suggest, or the implication is, that people are worried about it simply because we're all talking about it. But on the other hand, if you look at the number of people concerned about um, unemployment, for example, I don't know, what was it, 28%? Well, not mm. 28% of people are unemployed. Yeah. That's the nature of our society. We worry about things that we have no control over, and it seems that the politicians have no control over either, and that prompts concern. Uh, in, in terms of, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to lead the debate in any way. I'm just, I'm intrigued by people's personal issues because oh, oh, often, often there are concerns that people have, and then we're told by politicians, oh, but look, but people don't have any personal experience of this, but often people do. Well, uh, um, politicians are wrong, and you don't need personal experience to have a view about the impact of what's going on on your own life, on your country, on, on the future. Uh, it's, it's all very well to say you know, immigration is, is great, and, and that everyone comes in and works and pays their taxes, so everything's hunky-dory. It just simply isn't like that. The more people you have, the more pressures there are on our, uh, on our limited resources, the more you have to you have to spread thinly whatever uh, benefits come as a result of immigration, and the more people see that somehow it isn't working. We're not saying stop immigration. We're not suggesting no immigration. And that w I would agree with David Hansen on, on that one. It's simply bringing down the scale, something that got, quote, totally out of hand and out of control in by 2004 when, when Labour is saying well, indeed. Well, let's, that's let's, when it happened. Let's take this up then with David Hanson, Shadow Immigration Minister and a Labour MP, David. Um, people are concerned about this. It's become an issue only since the mass immigration policy which your uh, then Labour government uh, uh, basically brought in. Um, do you think that you made the wrong decisions? Hi, good afternoon, Julia. Uh, I, I think uh, th there has been an acceptance that uh, there should have been greater con transitional controls over the immigration that took place when uh, European countries exceeded in 2004. And I do understand genuinely some of the concerns. I mean, I'm speaking to you now from my constituency in North Wales, where we have a number of new arrivals who are doing various jobs, and there's been sort of cultural issues and cultural change that people have to accept. And also there are pressures, as, as we know, uh, across the whole country on things like school places and other issues. But equally as well, I, c I could also say to you, Julia, that I've met with you know, businesses in London who are crying out for skilled people to come and help grow those businesses and create wealth. Mm. I can point to the health service where many people are coming into the country as well to help develop the health service. And I can also point to many thousands of university places where people are coming for short-term and long-term university places, which all count in these figures which actually means that they're learning in this country, building this country, and when they do leave, which they majoritarily do, go back to their home countries with great thoughts and values about what Britain has But we also us. know, and we only very recent figures, that hundreds of thousands of students who come here don't actually ever leave, and, and no one bothers counting them in or counting them out, which no, well, is that, 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 That's a crucial point, and one of the things that I want to see is, is manage migration. We need to crack down on illegal immigration. We need to ensure that we deport people who shouldn't be here. We need to ensure that we deport people who've committed criminal offences here. But we also need to count people out, count people in, and look at who is coming in, because a qualified doctor uh, potentially uh, you know, coming to this country is a good thing for this country. Oh, well, it's a good thing for this country, but not necessarily a good thing for the country where that qualified doctor was trained at the expense of the taxpayers there, or often from the you know, Indian subcontinent or, or from Africa, countries that are crying out for those skilled professionals, the nurses and doctors that we take here, great for those people, great for our health service, but really, you could argue morally, not very good for the countries we are taking those people from who will actually need them far more than we do. 
But but I, I think the point I'm making, Julia, and I can accept that is, you know, as, a, as a valid argument to some of the cases that we're looking at, but I think the point I'm making is that immigration is an extremely complex issue. There are people here who shouldn't be here, who've come in illegally, who should be removed. There are people who've committed criminal offences who should be removed. But there are also people who need to come to this country to help us grow our businesses. There are people who come here for a short period of time, who learn skills, develop have good thoughts about the United Kingdom and go back to their own country and develop businesses there, which we do business with. And there are skill shortages in certain parts of the country oh, as well. There, 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 there are. Al, Al, a moment. Let's okay, take that I, issue I, up. Skill I shortages. Come, sorry, Julie. Can, can I come in on, on a couple of points yep. that David made there? Um, first of all, he, he says that transitional controls should have been brought in earlier, whatever, in 2004. In fact, by 2004, from 1997, immigration, net immigration had quadrupled. Uh, so it's not simply a case of getting it wrong with regard to the EU, although there was a massive error there. Secondly, we're not talking about people actually not arriving, no one coming to this country for all the things that David mentions. We're talking about the scale. And that is what is clearly totally out of control at the moment. Look, if you... Uh, sugar is, is lovely. Sugar is something that we all like in one way or another. You have too much of it, and we see the consequences. They can be dire. It's exactly the same with immigration. You have too much of it, out of control, and we have problems. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's help Mehmet. He's Vice Chair of Migration Watch. David Hansen is a Shadow Immigration Minister, also Labour MP for Delhi in Wales. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Immigration is now the number one issue for British voters. It's overtaken the economy. But why are you concerned about immigration? Why do you think it is an issue of concern 